Well, good evening and welcome to yet another edition of DXB Today. You join us on the sofa after what has been, I'm sure, a hot, active and rather, well, tiring day for you. Well, today we are going to try and tap into the athletic mindset. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, not with the three athletes uh, on the sofa at the moment, but with some true athletes joining us a little later on. Uh, we've got three very special guests joining us today as we try and tap into the athletic mindset by way of an Indian cricketer, a Australian swimmer, and a Lebanese athlete turned footballer. All that and more to come on the show throughout, but that's not all. What else is coming up? Let's have a look. Our Amy caught up with nutritionist Rashi Chowdhury to find out how she helps people transform their lives through health education. And talent violinist Nezna Ivkovic joins us in the studio to close off the night. So, what do you think about athlete mindset? Well, the question I think is, is, is I think the question we're trying to tap in today is, why are we doing it on DXB today? We're doing it because we're able to bring to the show three very talented international athletes have all achieved highly in their chosen fields. What's the one common theme between them we know? Dubai is one common theme. That Dubai <laughs> yeah. is now the platform, a base for them to uh, further their family, uh, their future, uh, and of course their careers as well. So that's one common theme. But the other we're trying to tap into is this athletic mindset. Is there something mental and physical that sets you apart from everybody else, that gives you that millimetre, that gives you that extra millimetre, that extra second, that extra whatever. Um, it's, I suppose, the billion dollar question, but hopefully we'll have the answer in the next 60 minutes. Yeah, I think so. I hope so, actually, as well, because as, as I've got children, I want my children to have that same sort of mindset. You know what I mean? And, and you always try and do the best you can. But to learn some tips and tricks, maybe nutritional, uh, that mental, that physical ability, waking up and having that. I do normally I do some push ups with my son in the morning. I say, right, come on in. Like, come on in, we've got to do your 20 push ups. Let's go for it. And um, but what's the best way to actually just have that as a regular thing where it's just like, right. And your mindset's very regimental. Mm. You've got to, that regimental thing is, is something that I think we need to learn and understand. Yeah. That's so true, Lane, because I personally do not have that mindset at all. So I'm really <laughs> looking forward to learning more. I'm not a gym person, but I'm really hoping this summer I can change that yeah. with this. Well, I think there's, there's an element of, of, of here as well. It's that element of optimism and that can-do attitude of Dubai that gives the opportunity for people to pursue their dreams and follow through on their dreams. So, yeah, I'm really interested to see this one. You know, it's the whole idea of does practice make perfect or is, are you born with God-given talents, etc.? Can you nurture those talents? Can you make the best of them? Too many questions. Exactly, and before we delve into it, let's find out who our guest co-host for today is. Hi, I'm Robbie Utapa. I'm a former Indian cricketer and now a peak performance mentor and coach. I will catch you guys in a bit. Wow. Legendary Robbie will join us on the sofa in just a bit. We are so lucky. Uh, but first, Amy got a glimpse in the day of the life of a renowned nutritionist, Rashi Chowdhury, helping us to understand the importance of our gut health and lifestyle habits as she revealed her new fitness product, Play. Have a look. So let's talk about gut health. Why is it so important? And also what sets your method apart from others in the industry? So I think for me, um, let's talk about gut health first. Yeah. Right? Gut is, it starts from our nostrils and it goes right up to our anus. That's where the gut is. Uh, number one, gut is like our second brain. You know, when you get up on stage and you're giving a presentation, we are stressed in our mind, right? Mm. But we feel the butterflies here. What is that? That's the gut and brain connection right there. Your gut is your second brain. So, you know, people who feel like gassy, bloated, constipated, not so great in their stomach, they will never feel their optimal year because of this gut and brain connection. So, number one is that. You know, serotonin, mm. your happy hormone. Yes. 80% of that is secreted in your gut. So, you could be living your best life externally, but if your gut does not support you with serotonin production, you're not going to feel happy, mm. you know. Immunity, it's a big buzz, buzzword now. Yeah. 90% of our immune cells are in the gut. 
So again, if you're not taking care of your gut, you can't be happy. Your immunity is not going to be great. Your brain is not going to get the right messages. So if we take care of the gut, that's why you say weight loss starts in the gut. Wow. Um, so it's phenomenal what your gut health can, I mean, how quickly your gut health can change because the microbiome are so sensitive mm -hmm. to what we expose our body to uh, and how much it can benefit. Definitely. So how do you differ from other experts in the nutrition field when it comes to gut health? You know, I think everyone has their own philosophy. I think the difference here would be that because I've dealt with it firsthand, I feel I'm a living example of being like, you know, food is medicine, food is information. What you choose to eat is going to give your body a certain set of information. So just be wise about your choosing because so much is possible. Okay, so can you tell me about Play and all of the great products that you have in the line? So Play is literally 15 years of my clinical experience with gut health, healthy hormones or hormonal well-being and healthy food psychology which I think a lot of women forget about our relationship with food needs to be the best um, I think what I have learned whatever I've learned from my clinical experience about these three things is all wrapped into this one little truffle uh, and then these bars as well uh, so you will notice that play is it's got a whole lot of pre and probiotics which are great for the gut uh, it has no refined sugar, no gluten at all. It's actually really anti-inflammatory. Uh, and the best part about Play is that, apart from the fact that it's a clean label product and all of that, uh, the amount of carbs in the product will always be slightly on the lower side. So it'll keep your blood sugar stable. But when you s say you eat biscuits or you eat a banana or you eat, um, I don't know, whatever else, that, chips, whatever else that people, or even other protein bars that you pick up, mm -hmm. it's loaded with so much junk that it's going to give you a blood sugar spike. Yeah. You know? And then you're craving more. Then you're craving afterwards. more sugar. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Well, I've got to tell you, I'm feeling a little bit hungry right now. So I think it's time we go and try some of your fantastic play products. Oh, yeah. Let's have a go. Yeah, big thanks to Amy for that one. Great to see Rashi again. Let's get <laughs> on to today's show. Uh, okay, yeah, athletes know a thing or two about protein, don't they? That's for sure. Well, uh, guest co-host today is something of a legend, former Indian cricketer, uh, celebrated for his contributions for both domestic and international cricket, becoming, well, one of India's most reliable top order batsmen. Whether with bat or gloves on, uh, he's a man you can rely on. And you can rely him on the sofa here. So welcome to the DXB Today sofa, to Robbie Tata. Thanks so much indeed for being thank here. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Great to have you with us. I mean, especially with a, t you know, to have a, to have a former T20 World World Cup winner alongside <laughs> us. Whilst the T20 World Cup is ongoing at the moment. I'm always ca cautious of this one as well. I know that sport has made, played such a large part in your life. The sport of cricket has played sure. such a large part in your life. And we're going to get onto the mindset in a few moments time. But are you one of those guys that once you've hung up the keeping gloves, hung up the bat, etc., are able to watch the game and enjoy it? Or do you just go, Oh, I wish I was out there with the lads. <laughs> I'm a terrible watcher of the game. <laughs> Even when I was playing, I was a terrible watcher of the game. If I finish my skill, I would do everything to just try and stray awake through the game. <laughs> so, uh, I'm still playing outside of India. I've retired in India, so I make myself available to play outside of India because the, the rules in India are, are, are built in such a way that if you play cricket in India, you can't play anywhere else in the world. So I've had to retire from all forms of Indian cricket just to free myself up to play cricket outside of India. The franchise cricket. Yeah. Franchise cricket. Yeah. Right, and uh, I want to do that, and then uh, and that, and that's what brought us here as well. Uh, so we moved here as a family about 15, 17 months ago, and we love it. Um, but I do watch cricket uh, now as a television broadcaster. It you have to. Forces me to watch <laughs> cricket now, so I have to. <laughs> so, as an extension to that, Robbie, how do you see the current team? Um, and exactly what Tom said, like, like, do you really get involved um, and, and really train the mindset? Because obviously the youngsters need that, that, that old head who understands certain things. So how much do you get involved and, and give advice? Well, I've actually just, uh, in the process of forming my own company, I've actually, I'm actually a, a, a peak performance mentor and coach now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm working with athletes and, and any individual who wants to pursue peak performance uh, in, 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 a, in any walk of life, right? And so I'm in that process at the moment, and and obviously you you come across a lot, a lot of athletes who are constantly trying to uh, you know better themselves uh, and and are on this journey of self growth, uh, and they want to 
kind of pursue their dreams, their goals, and what they want to achieve in in, in whatever aspect of, of life that they're trying to achieve it in. Uh, and with that, you and you see sport playing a big part uh, in itself because through sport, you kind of I'm, I'm sure you 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 realize that with sport, you kind of experience wins and losses on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And that teaches you a lot. How do you keep like losing? on a day-to-day -day basis or getting out cheaply on a day-to-day -day basis and then coming back the next oh, day. Oh, I know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> With the right attitude, right? Uh, and, and, and I think that teaches you a lot about life. It teaches you a lot about how to approach life and, how, and, and, and approach it with humility and with the kind of conviction that you, that you want to have to kind of achieve your goals and dreams. But what about like, you talked about like failures and wins and not only that, but also the regime itself is very intense. So how mm. is, um, having a good healthy mindset help with for athletes on the game and outside in their daily lives as well oh massively I think uh, it, it, it takes a lot to be able to kind of keep that peak performance mindset switched on at all times uh, having said that you uh, you have to treat yourself also a little bit of, uh, as a human being and not a machine where and you got to accept that there are times that that's not gonna happen uh, you're gonna feel low you know got, got to give yourself that little bit of cushion to to allow yourself to kind of feel a little bit low, uh, feel a little bit defeated, and go through those emotions because you can't live in denial. Because if you live, the, if, you li if you live in denial, it's going to catch up with you after a certain point in time. So to even be human about it and, and give yourself that grace to say, okay, I'm feeling like crap right now. I'm going to give myself a day to feel like crap, and then I'm going to pick myself up and get back on that horse mm. and and go back and try to try to, and achieve my goals and my dreams. We're trying to tap into the so-called athletic mindset here as well. And I think as soon as we say that, a lot of people go, yeah, but if you're good enough, you're going to achieve in your sport, your chosen sport, whatever. And we're going to look at it from a variety of different sports. Do we spend enough, do we pay enough attention to the mental side, as, as Motha was saying there? Not so much the mental side of the game and the pressure that you're under the game, but I mean, look at you in the international, the, the demands of international mm. cricket at the moment, franchise or otherwise, you're constantly on the road, you're living out of a, 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 of a suitcase, you're living in hotel rooms, you're living away from the family. Is that factored in enough, the, 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 the mindset away from the game? Not necessarily. I think it depends from country to country. Yep. Uh, I think it's a matter of uh, where the volume is, is high in the country, <laughs> these things don't matter that much, but where the volume isn't that high, where where the, it's like, it's like um, I'd say precious metals, right? Yeah. So uh, why is diamond the most expensive? Because the volume is quite less mm. uh, compared to a silver or, or, or bronze or anything of that sort, right? Uh, it's the same mentality. You go to a country like India, there's a lot less paid attention on, on mental health and mental health issues. But you go to a country like Australia, or you go to England, and then that, there's a lot more uh, attention because the volume of quality cricketers in, or athletes in, the, in those countries are far lesser than what you get oh. in a country like India. So it's a very volume-based mentality. Mm. It's very human mentality, actually. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, it's how we are built as, 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 uh, you know, as creatures. Yeah. Robbie, what do you think about the West Indies teams? Uh, Chances? Chances. Oh man, I think they, they have very strong chances, <laughs> especially with the way the batting lineups kind of uh, shaped up right now. Um, and I think that they, since they're playing at home, there's a massive advantage that is there on their hands. However, I think that their bowling is slightly inexperienced. Uh, but if they if their bowling bowling can come up to scratch, then they can certainly see themselves in the in the back end of the tournament, in the top four, I think. Nice. Yeah, and you can't ask, you know, there he is. I know we've got his West Indian roots, etc. But this, there's a co-host of this T20 <laughs> yeah. World Cup. Yeah, I know. But we've got to ask about the other host nation. <laughs> They've had a great start to the tournament. The USA really has made start, a statement, haven't they? <laughs> Incredible start. As in, it's, it's everything that you want a, a young team to have. Yeah. And uh, to be able to upset uh, Pakistan the way they have, yeah. to hold their nerve, as in just if you take the two bowlers who bowl that that super over, yeah. as in one's Mohammad Amir, who's a legend in his own right yeah. in in Pakistan cricket, and then here's sort of Neetra Valkar, who's who actually quit cricket in India when he was going to go to college, and then who played for under 19 the un, the under 19 Indian team, and then went to America to complete his education, and then pursued cricket once he finished his education, and then went on to become the captain of the the USA national side. And today, not as a captain, but I think as a vice captain, wins you a game and holds his nerve better than Mohamed Amir That's does. That's athletic mindset, surely. That is it. Yeah? That is it. There. Knocked down, didn't know where he's going to play the next game, etc. Yeah. Finds, yeah. finds himself in a yeah. T20 World Cup. I think as an athlete, over a point in time, I think even with the guests we speak today, uh, we'll, we'll learn and understand that athletes find it easy to be and remain in the uncomfortable zone of their lives. Yeah. They find comfort within the space of being uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think that's where you meet growth. Growth doesn't happen inside the comfort zone. Growth always happens outside of it. So I think athletes in, in general are comfortable being uncomfortable. 
And I know that you just moved to Dubai yourself. Mm -hmm. So what's your plans here? What you've been up to and the future of your career and your life here? In Dubai? Well, here it's uh, it, like I said, it's uh, right now I'm a peak performance uh, a mentor and coach. And, and that's what we're setting up right now at the moment. I'm just going through the rigors of what it takes to set up a company here in Dubai and, and, and just going through that whole rigmarole. And, and, and that's what I want to do as and I think I'm uh, I figured that my purpose in life was to serve people and I want to see how I could do it in a way that's meaningful not just to uh, people in my field but outside of my field and to the larger, larger society and uh, I've, I've, I discovered this and I was like oh I doubled down on it and, and today I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to everything that, that lies ahead. As long as you're feeling comfortable here. Okay? <laughs> I'm comfortable to sport but as long as you're comfortable here that's all yeah, we are. I'm, I'm very comfortable Perfect, here. cool. Yeah. Make yourself at home. It's all good. It's all Thank good. you. <laughs> well I can't wait to learn more about this and more but coming up we're meeting a star player of the Dubai-based women's football club, Banat FC, right after this.